Hi there, and welcome to this month's edition of Real Estate Matters with Claire Gerton and myself, Aisha Clay. This is a show about matters in real estate, that real estate matters and is important, and how real estate affects us and our local neighborhoods. For some, real estate is the largest investment. Both Claire and I are residential realtors focused right here on the main line and surrounding areas. We continue to be in very interesting times in the real estate market, and our goal is to bring you actual stories and scenarios some terms that might assist in helping to understand our residential real estate. And we hope to dovetail in some humor as well. <laughs> Great to see you, Claire. Aisha, always good to see you. Um, thanks for um, doing this with me again. Um, I think every time we do it, we uh, always say, Oh, you know, oh, we're in interesting times. And I think we say it every time, don't we? We do. Um, I mean, the market's always changing. And just to kind of pinpoint for the viewers where we're at, yep. um, you know, rates are uh, above six, below seven. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to reference it because it, it will tie into our story a bit. I agree. Um, and th that's kind of been a year going on. Um, and values have actually stay have been stable if not Increase. growing yeah a bit and uh, typically they have a very inverse relationship those two but because inventory is a low we're seeing the values and pricing stay right there absolutely and so, especially local Locally, hyper, yes. hyper locally, nationally, it looks a little different. Yes, but locally here on the main line, um, we're finding that to be true. I also think it's important to now that we're mentioning interest rates and um, values is that we we there was a you know a lot of cash came into our economy in a short amount of time and interest rates were so low that people could borrow at such a low amount amount to have to have them double uh, you know even close to triple has been a difference in this economy and this market. So a lot of buyers and sellers, and we're still inventory short, are, are you know, sort of reacting to this big jump. But historically, 8% um, is over the last 50 years is average. average so we're right. still below average in um, interest rates. Yeah. So very you... interesting phenomenon. It is. And I think part of the reason, and we'll get to our topic, it will, <laughs> it will tie in is, um, I think the folks who do have mortgages on the home, mm -hmm. they're, um, holding on to very low rates, mm -hmm. some 2.9, 3%, yep. 3.5, 3.9. Um, and they don't want to lose that mm -hmm. right to so buy there's something. some hesitation and, and that's what's keeping our inventory low. That, and I also think Art. some people have no mortgage left on their yeah, home, yeah. which might be a bulk of people that we're talking about, about today. today. So yeah. let's get to that. Yeah. So, so we um, came up with a topic today um, that is comes up a lot in my business. I know it does in yours as well, is, you know, what we like to call downsizing, some of us, but um, I've heard this, and I know you have too, is that really right sizing is we get to that place in our lives where we want to call them the golden years, anywhere from, you know, 50 on, I would say, where we've raised kids. Or... That seems so young, though, yes. I do have to say. <laughs> yes, it is so young. Well, that's, I'm just giving it on the lower end yeah, here. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's start there, that where the conversation comes up and we are finding with this specific market that the conversation is now has produce a little anxiety because we are so inventory low and interest rates are high. You know, what does that look like for different people in that demographic? So 50, let's say 55 to uh, the end of life. Yeah. And what we are discussing and finding is that it looks different. It for, does. For a lot of different um, scenarios. So uh, we thought today we could kind of d dive into a few scenarios of what a senior uh, right sizing would, might look like and some of the things that come along with that. Absolutely. Cause initially when we were talking about this topic, I'm thinking 55 plus, but boy, is there a lot of categories in that sector? Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Let's, let's dive in. 
Um, so to you, what does a typical downsizer, right sizer scenario look like? And that, that's a great question, and I'm going to at, return it to you yeah, in a minute. Sure. But it, I, the one I have in mind, I you know had recently in the last two years worked with a couple that had lived in their home for 50 years. They were in their 80s, and they have they had four grown children who are already you know looking towards their retirement. So there was kind of like a double kind of interest around what to do with this home that they've lived in for 50 years, what was going to be next for the parents and how to work through that process. Um, and what I found was, and I, we ended up did listing their home and selling it, but it took about 12 to 18 months for that conversation to unfold to be what was going to be a good situation for everybody. I was going to say it doesn't start with come list my home, no, does it? No, not in this, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, it really, it, it can, it can come list my home, but sometimes in that process you find, well, there's lots of different ways and avenues to pursue for the process for, um, you know, safety and well being. And, and I know you said you had a couple stories that you've been working with um, in the last couple of years. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your story. Um, the folks I were working with was, a. a a friend growing up, her parents, yeah. they had been in their home for 40 years, raised five children there. And I found some very interesting dynamics happening. Um, they ended up increasing the size of their home, uh, decreasing the size of their lot. Yep. And some of the kids were like, hey, like, why are you getting a bigger home when it's just the two of you versus our old well, family say of more, seven? Say more about that. What were they increasing? Why? Why did they increase the size of home? Oh, yeah, what were they getting? Yeah, I think they were twofold. I think they were getting, you know, a home that they've kind of always wanted, yeah. so to speak. And then also because they had five kids, they also have lots of grandkids and they wanted to be sure they had enough space for everyone when they came over for Sunday dinners yeah. um, or things like that. Uh, however, the home is main floor living at yep. its best, yep. but it, it also has a finished lower level, uh, okay. a second floor, but they don't necessarily have to use those on a daily to, basis. So they could, for their purposes, when they're there together, they had a main, main floor master. Yeah. And was it a single home or is a it a single home in this case okay. where we, we know it's not always the case. And, and as Claire mentioned, that scenario took a bit over a year's time. Yep. So it was a, a process. I almost want to call it a journey for them sure. because they weren't sure what exactly was next. Right. But the humor of some of it was the one day I get a call and she is putting things out on the curb for the trash men to take slowly paring down sure. of what they don't see being useful in the next home. And then he's coming home from an appointment, picking the <laughs> yeah, things yeah. up off the oh, curb yeah. and bringing back in because he wasn't, con yeah. yes, he wants to use it and he wasn't consulted. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, different, different kind of outlooks for what our golden years are downsizing, right sizing sure. our senior living might look like. And so how, as a realtor, how are you approaching, if somebody comes to you, hey, this is what I'm thinking about, how do you approach those conversations and what does that look like? So the um, first of all, that question makes me think of a question that I get asked. I, I feel like I get asked once a week. Interesting. Uh, and maybe because I have my, a mother who's in her 80s, so we, sometimes our conversations are about that and then her uh, peer group, which is I get a letter she lives in Florida in the wintertime and up here in the north in the um, summer. But she, these this demographic, they get a letter a week. I can sell your from house. From whom? From realtors. Yeah. You know, just I can sell your house in one week. And that actually can cause some anxiety because they think, you know, a, sellers think, well, maybe I should, now is the time. But what I have found is, is that we need more conversation, more discussion. Is the anxiety because it's like one week, one week yeah, to make a decision of, of my life here. Right. And that, yeah. and that, you know, there is some kind of unknowns out there for uh, golden years and right sizing. And so I think this is why this discussion is in interesting to me and important. I think for the general public is let's take a breath and kind of look at different scenarios and different ways on how to approach that feeling of, is now the time to sell your house? 
What will it take to sell your house? What would be the benefits? What are you going to? Mm. All of those those um, considerations um, for the next step. And I think that's where the conversation starts. It starts with what is what is important to you as a as a human. A simple yet massively important question. <laughs> what is important to you? Do you want to be lots of times? Do you want to be close to healthcare? Do you have healthcare needs? Do you have trouble mobility? Do you need occupational therapy or things that, do you need um, adaptations or accessibility? Do you need ramps or grab bars or things that are gonna make your life um, more safe? Do you have, do you feel fear of falling? You know, some, it may be that somebody is in great health, walks every day, wants to be by a trail. (laughs) The opposite of that, it can Mm. in the same demographic. Right, so it is different for every different human and different um, seller, I think, and that's kind of where I think the conversation starts. Yeah, like- and, and I think we were talking. I don't even know if we want to say seller, maybe client or person. I like that too. Right, because we were talking before the show that we were finding that some folks don't want to make the move. Right, and hey, that's okay too. And why? So why does why is somebody hesitant? You know what's if what what's you know what's holding them there? I know in the scenario with the, that I was talking about earlier, they had fifty years of memories. They had mm. all their Thanksgivings, all their Christmases. This is where they gather their grandchildren. How does that look going forward? So working on some of those, you know, I remember sitting with them and saying, in a perfect world for you, what would you like it to look like? And they could start to begin to say, well, we want a one store living. We don't want any yard work. We don't want to have to, um, you know, take care of and be responsible for roofs and things. So they knew it was time for them to go to a place where they could still have access to their children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, and it, you know, it took some time, but it was a little bit of a process just to get them to, um, you know, sort of think about it. In and that in, way. in that scenario, were they the only ones um, having this conversation or are there other people in their lives uh, yeah. conversing about this or inserting their opinion here about it? Yeah, besides their own family, but absolutely your peers, right? You're, you know, who you're in community with oftentimes are saying, well, you know, we're moving here, we're going here, we're making these choices. So it does put a little bit of a um, you know, pressure on some people to say, well, what's going to be good for us? And I think that's the most important question. What's going to be good for us? Yeah. Which, you know, brings us to sort of, we talked about, you know, what makes, what brings people there and, you know, say a little bit more about what hesitations um, clients have in this, in this time in their lives. Yeah. So um, I think we're talking like we might get a call from, um, a friend who has aging parents or just get a call in general from a past client. Mm. And they're like, I think I want, you know, I think my parents are getting ready to move, Mm. but perhaps they haven't really had a solid conversation with the parents or uh, sitting all together and hearing the parents' needs, which to your point was super significant. Mm. I think oftentimes uh, this, what are we called, senior, might feel hesitation because they think things have to happen really quickly. And so meeting that with extreme patience Mm -hmm. is a must. Mm -hmm. We have found from our personal experience, this is something that has taken a year, Mm -hmm. if not two, kind of from maybe not even the starting conversation, but a conversation where for us to like, where might you be going? Are you going to stay in place? What does that look like? Um, what type of, uh, ha, I guess, uh, residency do you want? Do you want 55 plus? Is it going to be a senior mm-hmm. um, center or facility? Um, or is, is it, it just going to be, a, a, you know, an, another house? Another house. That's, that's newer build or older build or, yep. or dream house. I, it does Department. happen at the same time. I, I, we've seen some things where people who are maybe in their um, early retirement age, I'm seeing this um, in this Radnor area and Wayne, I'm sure, and Tredifferent, where um, they've raised their kids 
they are young enough and when they think i i would like to move on i don't want to have this big house and in that situation maybe that did happen quickly because they're saying oh we're inventory low in this market now's the time to sell um uh, and and they did act really quickly yeah so i think we're seeing a def a bunch of different scenarios. Uh, yeah, so in that scenario, it was taking advantage of the high equitable market, so to speak. Right. And in some, it could be like a, a something regarding health that's kind of pushing them sure. to that yeah. point. I think um, some other hesitations could be, there could be many decision makers, right? And not everybody is going to be on the same page. Some people are acting on their own own behalf and it might not be uh, for the greater good. There was a great word you used for the person that really is making decision because it's for them. What word was that, Claire? I, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. oh, I know. Okay, I remember now. It, it was agency, like oh, yeah. having agency for oneself <laughs> so, versus being told. All right, so how do you handle that? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can tell you how I try to handle it, but how is it that you, you know, you, you handle it when you're in a, a situation where there are maybe several decision makers? Yeah. What have you done? I'm going to turn that to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I try to, um, is to kind of center those decisions on each person, right? So, for the people in this the scenario that I'm thinking of is I directly ask them, what would you like to see? And then I ask the grown up children, how is it that you would like to see this? I mean, all up together so that, you know, you, you could get some difference of opinions, um, but it was a more neutralized conversation because I was the, mm. the neutral party. Yeah. Um, and it, I, I, to your point, it's just, Sometimes it's just patience and uh, being trying to be a little bit better listener than, you know, a, tell, this is how this works. Yeah. Um, and it, it does free up. It gives it a bigger space, I believe, to mm -hmm. even though they might not be the answers they want to hear or this may not be from each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the, the kids want the parents, you know, get rid of that junk, you know whatever. And the parents are like, no, but that's valuable. That bowl is valuable. So yeah. how to find sort of a common ground um, mm. is a thing, is something that I think is useful to everybody, yeah. <laughs> you know, not just, not just in real estate. Um, but it does come up. I think it comes up a lot in real estate, especially when you have grown up kids helping grown ups, <laughs> yeah. you know, grown up uh, seniors, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're talking about um, having more conversations, understanding that it's going to be a journey, right? It's not like a destination per se. Right. It's a journey through all of this. Right. We're also talking about um, figuring out and maybe asking the person what their pain points mm. are mm -hmm. to help maybe either self-discover or to figure out maybe to them it's this huge thing. And then when you hear it and you're like, I got a person for that. Yeah. Don't even, right. don't even worry. I got right. a per I got you. Right. Right. Yeah. So let's not worry about that. What other, uh, you know, pain points do you have? So let's talk a little bit about that. So the w the pain point that you're talking about is I have a house full of stuff. I don't know where to begin. Perhaps. Yeah. So one, you know, we have a person for that. We have a vendor. I work with closely with the vendor who comes in and helps sift categorize. These are things that are important to you. We'll go with you. These things your children would like to have. These things your neighbor would like to have. These things can go to a consignment that I can help connect you with. These things need to go to a donation, goodwill. Huge. And just by having that third party vendor, um, I think is super useful. Um, what did you call that person? Uh, why a consultant, yeah. an organizing, yeah. organizing consultant. Okay. Um, we also, I know for my own mother, um, I guess because this is where we are, right, in her life, she is worried about some of the very, very, very special things that she wants to make sure go to somebody. So she went, she took it upon herself to talk to her financial advisor, and she found two things for each person that she loves. Oh, wow. And she talked to them and said, would you like this bowl? <laughs> and the person said yes, and she actually wrote them down. And took a picture of it. So that's, and the rest is, doesn't matter. So those were her, like it was a way for her to, you know, um, give something 
um, and while she's still using it, and so that she feels really good about that for her. That was important to her. Maybe somebody's like like your people who are like, get rid of it, put it on the curb. <laughs> it's different. It sure is. And speaking of differences, just bringing up your mom for a moment, you were saying that she is the type, and this ties in really well with our conversation. Instead of um, we're not specifically talking about moving. For some people, yeah. this is moving. For her, she's, you mentioned wanting to kind of stay in place. Yes, yes, yes. And it's yeah. end of life. Age okay. in place. Yeah, and then there comes the agency. So what is her agency on how she wants her last days to look? Yeah. Um, you know, it sounds morbid, but it really isn't. It's actually kind of a, I think, a, I think this is a fascinating topic. And we uh, are really, you know, due to sources, I mean, through sources like AARP, um, census.com, com, you know, those kinds of sources, we are learning and expecting, um, what some builders and people are calling a silver tsunami by the year 2030 baby boomers, most baby boomers will be retired. And, and by the year 2035, this, I think this is an interesting, totally interesting, um, that for the first time in America, there will be more people in America over the age of 65 than there are under the age of 18. Yeah, that's amazing to for think about. For the first time. So we have, we will have way more seniors than we have, or more seniors than we will have, um, minors who, when you're thinking about care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so exactly. And I think we we're talking about like that demographic is going to be so large that a majority of the housing will say yes. has been built as the four bedroom, two and a half bath, raise a family, colonial type of family right. home yeah. where we might be seeing that we might not have enough or the right inventory for this demographic. Which seems like that is the information that is coming out of these resources. Yeah. So as in our profession, it's hard to find inventory when there isn't any. <laughs> so, yeah. so we're, you know, builders are scrambling. Um, but yeah, like to your point, you said, I think you said earlier is that, you know, if you build an apartment situation for seniors, then you, you can get a continual rent rather than building condos. Yes, exactly. And I think that might be, uh, you know, from financially speaking, from a builder or developer's yeah. aspect, enticing. But with a, with apartments or high rises, you know, your demographic or segment of population can really vary. Yes, sure. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily seniors, but I am seeing a lot of the, the mid rises, I guess I'll call them, pop up locally in our area. Yeah. And they're really catering to such a diverse yeah. sector, I think, of, of yeah, young professionals or downsizers or yeah, yeah of folks versus the designated maybe 55 plus yeah. or the designated senior community yeah. which exist in our area we do have those segments the 55 plus could be condos could be singles or attached homes so do you think we're going to see a little shift there i i do i think it's going to take some time and uh, you know to your point wondering if we're going to see those um, larger homes, boxed homes, however sure. you want to call it. Kind of decline in value. I don't know. You know, maybe. I understand building smaller homes, um, like on a parcel, isn't very economic for builders per se. Right. Yeah. Um, that's why I was thinking those apartments might make um, more sense for a builder. Yeah. It will be, I will be fun to watch. It will I, be. I think we are in for a shift there yeah. besides our shifting market with interest rates and you know, um, now that being a seller's market, but it's going towards, I mean, it's been a seller's market for a while. Quite we're at some the, time. We're at the top. We know from history that there is going to be a shift. It, and, and Just it a matter be, of when. And it will become a, a buyer's market. And I, I something I've also learned in studying a little bit about shift um, through Keller Williams actually was that, um, that a shift happens kind of like a golf swing, that it goes it's like slowly backswing and then it kind of comes through quickly. Oh, interesting. So, so that, you know, we're kind of been talking about it, but it may turn, you know, it may turn pretty quickly. So um, we need to kind of be thinking about that possibility and what that looks like for, for 
buyer seller humans. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, and that could be um, where maybe aging in place or staying in sure. place might might become a little bit more popular if there isn't that type of uh, housing ready for sure. um, somebody. I think we we're also talking. We were talking about a couple different vendors. You were talking about an awesome organizer. I wanted to come back to that for a moment. Um, because there are people who can help and, and to not make this kind of transition possibly, whether you are aging in place or moving, yep. not make it feel so overwhelming. And I think you were talking about your organizer stager. Um, there was also somebody, somebody called a senior home safety specialist. Mm -hmm. So if you are staying in place or even moving somewhere and you want to be sure that you, you kind of feel good in your home, yep. um, to maybe add the grab bar, um, make sure lighting is, is there and needed the ramp in the garage yeah, or some, something. Some yeah. of those tweaks to the home. And there's also somebody called a senior move manager that will help you figure out, uh, maybe what to take. Mm -hmm. with you, what not to take, mm -hmm. um, measure your furniture for the place you're going to perhaps. So there, I guess my point, and there's also the agent place specialist that I think can help out with laundry or, um, groceries on one day that some people are Helping, relying yeah, on figuring out. Yeah. Also yeah. that brings another, um, consultant is, a uh, one that I know we've had you know, starting to pop up a little bit more is, you know, a lot of times families or couples or even singles are not sure where to start. And um, a consultant can come in and, you know, who understands all the options of, you know, maybe of a senior center or a senior living situation, what the costs are, what that, what that looks like for how many years we expect to mm. be here. And um, I know those, that's been very useful to some families that I've worked with. Oh, that's super. And then I think you also tied that into if that's uh, um, something that somebody wants to do and invest in moving to maybe the, the mm. senior facility, what that might look like. And let's say they did sell there. Yeah, and they have time. all these proceeds. Yeah. yeah. And then how to manage that. So you know, a financial advisor would be another vendor. I mean, there, there are vendors available, right? And it's just kind of getting them in the right place for the right people. Yeah, at the right time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I, our goal, part of our goal, I guess, is, is to note that um, this doesn't have to be so overwhelming. Yeah. Rely on people who um, might specialize in this. Yep. It's okay that it looks different from a friend or a neighbor sure. or a family member, what you decide for yourself, right? right? And it can look financially different from all different ranges. Yeah, and speaking of that, we were talking a bit about, so, you know, some of the, you know, these uh, helpful vendors do cost money. Mm. And, um, and we understand, you know, the finances are a very important factor in this. So there is a product and we're, we're not gonna go too far into it because we're not, um, you know, the- Mortgage people. <laughs> yeah, we're not mortgage people. Um, but let's say a person does wanna stay in place perhaps, and they're worried about finances for future because they do want to stay in place. There's a product called a reverse mortgage that they can tap into the equity mm -hmm. um, into their own home. Mm. And unlike perhaps a, a home equity line of credit, mm -hmm. there typically aren't any monthly payments. So if somebody's worried about getting maybe uh, somebody, an age in place specialist, for their home. So it might be an option to, if you're on a fixed Possibly. income, to figure out how to tap into the equity that you've built in over the years. Yeah. Yeah, it really does sound like a, um, a product that would be worth exploring. Investigating, exploring for sure. Yeah, and then decide whether it, that fits your needs yep. or not. Yeah. Anything <laughs> else to add, Claire? No, I... I it was such an important, I, mean, I feel like we just hit the iceberg um, as, as usual, but it's such an important um, topic, I think, especially in this market, um, as we are looking towards the next 5, 10, 15 years, what, what the market is, is going to look like, um, that it's, I think it's been great to at least start the conversation um, here. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's such a theme for 
next week, yeah. <laughs> next month. Yeah. Yeah, and for future with family, start the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Let's let's leave that with. Yeah. yeah you know, it's not it's not too late. Um, you don't want it to be too late. You don't want to have a ca catastrophic event like somebody falls down the steps or you um, you know you got have a health diagnosis. You it would be really good. Um, for everybody to start the conversation if you're thinking about moving today or if you're thinking about moving in 15 years. Yeah, sure. yeah. that sounds great. Thank you, as always. All right, always so good. Yeah, yeah. appreciate you. And you, I appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks, Until I next month. Yeah, great.